What's up, everybody? Today, I'm going to be giving you the first complete steps that you should take when you first start learning how to play guitar. Before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, be sure to check out the guitar lessons that I offer. If you want guitar lessons, then email me. They're $30 an hour. All right, let's hop right into it. So the first thing that we really want to take care of is what we want to use to make the sound on the guitar. Do you want to use a guitar pick or do you want to just use your fingers? For both methods, there is a right and wrong way to do it. Let's start with the first method, which is holding the pick. All right, so if you're playing with a pick, the first thing you're going to want to do is hold your right hand in a formation that looks similar to this. You're basically positioning your right hand to where it looks like you're in the process of making a fist, but you pause midway through. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to put your pick on the surface of your index finger. It's important that you don't put the pick in a position like this, but you put it in a position where it's pointing like that. You really want to make sure that the tip of your pick is pointing in the same direction that your front knuckle is on your index finger. You may not be able to get the tip of your pick to point in the same direction as your front knuckle perfectly, but you should still try to get it close. And now that we know how to hold the pick the right way, let's take a look at how you use your fingers to play the guitar. All right, so the fingers that are involved in this method of making the sound on the guitar is really only four fingers, and that's your thumb your index finger, your middle finger, and your ring finger. The thumb is actually responsible for three different strings, and that's the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth string. We're going to learn more about the names of these strings later on in the video. The index finger is only responsible for one string, and that is the third string. The middle finger is responsible for one string, and that is the second string and last but not least we have our ring finger and the ring finger is also responsible for one string which is the first string put these fingers all together and you have a finger for each string your thumb is responsible for the first three strings, and then your other fingers match up with the other three strings. Some good things to observe here are that the only finger that is responsible for more than one string is your thumb. Every other finger is matched up with only one string. And when you all match your fingers up to their appropriate strings, you can get the sounds you want on your guitar whether this be plucking chords with your fingers or plucking strings individually the next thing that you want to look into is how you're going to get your instrument tuned this really isn't skill based or anything this is just something that you need to make sure is taken care of it's really important that you make sure your instrument is tuned well because like why not you know it's just because it really, really does not make sense to be really genuinely wanting to get better on your instrument and you're practicing it and it's not even tuned. You can find plenty of tuners on websites like Amazon or Sweetwater for a very, very good price. All right. You got your tuner. Cool. Even if you don't have your tuner, I will still watch the rest of this video just to know what to do when it's time to get your tuner. And so that you could come back to this video and know you're going to have everything you need to continue your progress on the instrument. All right, now let's get into some more of the basics. One of the first things you're going to want to make sure that you tackle is learning and memorizing the strings. There are six strings on the instrument and they all sound different. Let's go in order. All right. So our first string is that thickest string that is faced towards you, that's the closest string to you, that is your low E string, all right? The next string under that is your A string.
And then after that string, it's your D string. Okay, and then after that, it's your G string. And then after that, it's your B string. And then after that, the thinnest string, farthest away from you, it's the high E string. Yes, there are two strings that are called E. That thickest string that is closest to your face, that is the low E string. Why? Because it's the lowest or this is the basiest. And then that string that's farthest away from you, which is the high E string, that is high, right? It has a higher pitch or something, I guess, than all the other strings. It sounds higher. And now that you know the name of each of the strings, there are five chords we're going to check out today. And there is a mix of major and minor chords that we're going to check out. Chord one, C major. Let's break down our C major chord a little bit. So for our C major chord, we're going to want our index finger on the first fret of the B string. We're going to want our middle finger on the second fret of the D string. And we're going to want our ring finger on the third fret of the A string. Yes, you might want to know the names of your strings first before approaching this way of learning where to put your fingers for the chords we're going to go over. So if you have to, rewind the video and really work on memorizing the letters of the strings. Let's take a look at how our C major chord looks one more time. Chord 2, E minor. For your E minor chord, you're going to want your index finger on the second fret of the A string, and you're going to want your middle finger on the second fret of the D string, okay? Those little open circles on the top of the strings just indicate that no fingers should go on those strings. You strum them open. Let's take one more look at how the chord looks. Chord 3. For our G major chord, we're going to have our middle finger on the third fret of the low E string, our index finger on the second fret of the A string, and our ring finger on the third fret of the high E string. Let's take one more look at how the G major chord looks. Chord 4, A minor. All right, so this is the chord voicing for A minor. For A minor, you want to make sure your middle finger is on the second fret of the D string, your ring finger is on the second fret of the G string, and your index finger is on the first fret of the B string. Let's take one last look at how our A minor chord looks. Chord 5, D major. This is the chord chart for D major. That first string with a circle on top of it, that's the D string. All right? You don't want to put any fingers on that string. Strum it with no fingers on it because it's already the D string, and this is the D major chord. You want to put your index finger on the G string, put your ring finger on the B string, and your middle finger on the high E string. All right, guys, and that is it. For the chords that we're going to go over today i hope the way i presented it to you really really helped let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the chords we know went over today of course there are plenty of other chords similar to these that will make your experience playing guitar a lot more fun and if you feel like it maybe go on the internet and learn some more chords that are more like these all of the chords we went over today are considered open position chords there are a lot of other open position chords you can learn that will really help you in learning songs. So if you feel like you want to, maybe go and look up some of your favorite songs 
and some of the chords that are needed to play them, maybe try to find the open position chords for those. Another item you really want to make sure you get a hold of before you get too far in your guitar journey is a metronome. If you don't know what a metronome is, it's essentially a device that makes sure that you're on rhythm. Whatever you're playing, it makes sure that you're on rhythm. Even if you're playing chords or scales, you should be using a metronome. If you're practicing scales or you're practicing chords, using a metronome is going to help you get that natural sense of rhythm. It could either be digital like this or it can be old school, something like this. All right. I'll leave some links to a metronome in the description below. And that is all I have for you today, guys. We went over some of the items you're going to need to have quality practice sessions. We went over the names of each of the strings and we learned some chords. If you have any other questions for me, let me know in the comments. Of course, there are plenty of other things I could have included in this video, but I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. You really want to start off small. Once again, if you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have a very blessed day. See you in the next video.